G'day GDL people, Bruce here, Barking Dog Bim. Cup planes, what are they? When and how do you use them? Now you can probably get away with modeling 80% of your stuff using prism or the prism underscore command. They're pretty useful with their capacity to do rounded shapes and cut holes, but sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes you need something a bit more. You might need to do this, or something like this, or even this. This is where cut planes can help. Now, cut plane does exactly what you might think it does from its name draws a plane, cuts your geometry. Cut plane. Cut planes are an essential tool when it comes to doing a lot of your model generation in GDL, but they can be a bit tricky to understand. So, let's work through this so that we can get a handle on their idiosyncrasies. So I've got my Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar turned on, which is this toolbar here. You don't need it, but it can be helpful. And we'll open our Help under Help Online Resources from Archicad 27 GDL Reference Guide, which will take you to your PDF version. 26 and earlier, it's under Documentation. And you can view that online or download a copy and view it in your PDF viewer of choice. And the online version can be found at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on Reference Guide. Now, cut planes can be found under 3D Shapes, Cutting in 3D. And there's a number of variations and a number of ways that you can cut your geometry. So we've got the cut plane. There's three variations of the cut plane. We've got the cut poly and cut poly A, cut shape, and two variations of cut form. So for this episode, I will just talk about the cut plane variations, which is cut plane, cut plane 2, and cut plane 3. So we'll start a new object, clicking on this button here, new object. You can also come up to file, libraries and objects, new object. I'll restore down using this button up here. On a Mac, it's right click on the tab and choose undock. And I'll open a 3D script window and a 3D view dialog. Turn on my axes so I know where we are. And what I'll do is I'll just put in some geometry so I know what's going on. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I like to put in some comments at the header and the footer to help me collect my thoughts. And I'll just put in a call axes command. And if you wanna know what that is, have a look at video 28, which I will link up there. All right, so here's my axes, X, Y, and Z. And what I'll also do is I'll just throw in a prism as well using Z, Z, Y, Z, X as the height and A and B as the outer dimensions. And we'll give it a transparent or translucent material as well. So I'll set up a parameter, just a surface parameter. And we'll give it a white glass. Right. So now let's put in our cut plane. And the command is simply cut plane. And we've got the square brackets here, which means that these additional parameters are optional. And each subsequent parameter is in its own square brackets, which means it's sort of like a staged optional. I can have one extra, two extra, three extra, and so on. Don't have to add them all. And down here we can see if cut plane has the following number of parameters, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it behaves differently. So we'll start with zero parameters. It means it'll be in the XY plane. So what does that mean? Let's have a look. Cut plane. Right, so what it's done is it's drawn an infinite plane on the floor. So in the XY plane, cut everything above it. Now if I check my script, I'll get a warning here. I'm missing a cut end statement. So it'll still execute, but I get a warning because this will impact all the geometry between my cut plane declaration and my cut end statement. So I'll put in a cut end here. Now that's just a flat plane. What I can do if I want to manipulate that plane, I can add 
something to my transformation stack. So let's add half a ZZYZX and we'll delete that. So what that's done is it's added half the height of my box, added my cut plane and then drawn my box. So you can see it's only cut the top of it. And I can use other transformation manipulations to transform that cut plane however I want to get the result I want. So let's add one parameter. Cutting plane goes across the x-axis. Angle is between cutting plane and xy plane. Angle. Okay, so if I add a parameter, it's talking about it like it's an angle. So let's add one parameter of 45. Cut plane 45. Righto, so we can see that the cut plane has tilted at a 45 degree angle rotating around the x-axis, which is interesting because this cut plane gives no indication of an angle. Cut plane 2 does, but this one doesn't, but that's how it behaves. If I only put in one parameter, it treats it like an angle. So let's change it to 30, 30 degrees, let's change it to 35. Right, so we can see the impact there. Okay, let's go to two parameters. Two parameters, cutting plane is parallel to the z-axis, crosses x and y at the given values. All right, let's do that. So it's no longer an angle, it's now a distance. And each of these links on my axes are one meter, remembering that links in GDL are in meters, not in millimeters. So let's go one, one, two parameters. Right, so immediately it's changed to draw my cut plane vertically. So 90 degrees, one meter on the X, one meter on the Y. So let's change X to 0.5, half a meter, 500 mil. Right, it's drawing the X here. And let's change the Y to 1.2. Okay, so that's how two parameters works. And you'll find that cut plane three is behaving the same. Cut plane three, behaving the same. But we'll finish with our cut plane command first. So now we have three parameters. Cutting plane crosses the X, Y, and Z axes at the given values. Okay, so let's keep X and Y as they are, and let's make Z one meter. Okay. Let's change them all back to one, just so it can be a bit clearer what's going on. Cut plane one, one, one. So it should cut through this corner. Well, actually, sorry, this corner first, this corner, and this corner here. Oh, let's get rid of my transformation. Right, so it's cutting through there, there, and there. So again, if I change it back to what it was, that makes more sense, right? Cutting the X at 0.5, cutting the Y out at 1.2, and cutting the Z at 1. Drawing my cut plane and cutting it all off one side. Right, the fourth parameter is a side. And the side, zero removes parts above the cutting plane, which is the default. So if we don't declare it, it will remove what's above the cutting plane, and we've seen that up till now. One removes parts below the cutting plane. If I add a zero here, there'll be no change. If I add a one here, it should reverse. And it does. Very interesting. Before we get onto the fifth parameter, what I'll do is I'll add a stack of boxes so that we can see the impact over multiple geometry declarations. So I'll put in a go sub, I'll shift this declaration, prism declaration into the go sub. And what I'm doing here is I'm looping through three times. Each time I loop, I draw the prism, and then I add the prism height and rotate 60 degrees. And I'm missing my end. Here we go. Missing my end statement. So there's some boxes. Okay, so what I've done is I've added another surface in here, which is a blue glass. And I've split up my two loops so that I'm now drawing six boxes stacked on top of each other and turning around. 
So let's have a look. So I've got my grey boxes here and I've got my blue boxes here. I'll just change some of these values, change the cut plane angle a little bit. Right. So let's start adding this fifth parameter, see what happens. So what's the fifth parameter? Fifth parameter is the status. And the status is a J1, J2, J3, or J9. And the values of J1 through 9 are 1, 2, 4, or 2, 5, 6. And what do they do? Well, J1 uses the attributes of the body for the generated polygons and edges. Right, what does that mean? Let's add it and see what happens. So a J1 is a value of 1. What goes on? Hmm, what's happened here? Now, cut plane has flipped sides. We also notice that the lines separating our cut geometry have disappeared. But first of all, let's see what the story is about this side not working. So if I change that to zero, no impact. If I change it to one, no impact. So that's actually mentioned here. Note three, so you've got to read through it all says prefer using cut plane 3. If you use cut plane with five parameters, then the fourth parameter, which is our cut side, will be omitted. Why? No idea. Don't know. So what we now need to do is we need to use our cut plane 3. And so this should now flip to the other side because it's cut plane 3. Amazing. So we were talking about the status of J1 uses the attributes of the body for the generated polygons and edges. So this outline here is the generated polygon and edges. Because we're using the cut attributes of adjacent bodies that are touching, they heal up, they blend together. That's how it works in ARCHICAD, right? So if I place down two slabs, that have the same cut attribute, in this case, building material. Let's just place them separate to each other. I'll have a look at this section here. They're showing independently because they're not touching, but if I drag this one over, the cut lines heal. So that's the same thing that's happening with our cut plane operation, where we're using the attributes of the body for the generated polygons and edges. Now, of course, if I change the cut attributes of one of these slabs, it no longer cleans up between the two elements. And that's the same way that your cut plane operation works as well. It won't clean up between bodies that use different cut attributes. So that's J1. J2 is generated cut polygons will be treated as normal polygons, all right? What does that mean? Let's change that to two. So two things have happened now. One, you can see that the line separating these cut bodies has come back. We've now got a separating line, but we've also got some sort of funny color on our cut faces. Now I'll explain that in a minute and I'll explain where that comes from. But if I get rid of this status, comes back. But if all I'm doing is using the status that the cut polygons are generated, why is it changing the surface? It's got something to do with adding that fifth parameter in that it now looks at how it's cutting it slightly differently. So now if I add in my one, my one was, what was my one? Attributes of the body. So we're using the cut attributes of the body. There we go. So that's one plus two. What's the next one? Generated cut edges will be invisible. One plus two plus four. Right, so all of the cut edges have disappeared. And the last one is two, five, six. Two, five, six, which is vertices on the cutting plane are treated as removed. Now. I have no idea what this does. I can't figure out what difference it makes. 
to anything you do at all. So I don't know why it's there. Maybe someone could graph yourself, could leave a comment as to what that actually does. Right. So what we'll do now is we'll save this object. Save it by clicking on your save icon or control S because when you are in a GDL environment, the save refers to your GDL object. Save it to an external location for data safety. So I've just called it 030 BDB cut plane. Go to our floor plan, select my object. It'll be pre selected because I've just created it. Place it. And there's nothing to see because I don't have a 2D script yet. So I'll just throw in some standard 2D script, which has got the project to command, which will just project the 3D from above. So let's have a look at that in 3D. In 2D, you can see that the lines are invisible. And if I have a look at either of these two sections, lines are invisible. Let's turn off the materials. You can really see that they're not showing. And just something extra I'll do so that we can play around with these statuses. So I've just created some Boolean parameters on off, and off is a value of zero, on is a value of one. So in our 3D, instead of doing one plus two plus four, we can do J1 plus two times. J2 plus four times J3 plus two, five, six times J. It's actually meant to be J9. J9. Now, these parameter names are just coincidental to the flag name. I've made these up J1, J2, J3. They're not a special Archicad GDL parameter name. And then in here, we multiply the parameter status by its boolean value one two four or two five six and as i said the value is either zero or one so if j2 is turned off it'll be two times zero so it won't get added to my status so i'll save that let's have a look at what goes on so if i turn on Use object attributes for the cut. That's happened. If I turn on normal polygons, but turn off attributes, that's happened. If I turn on invisible edges and turn everything else off, that's happened. And if I turn them all on, that's happened. Right, so let's talk about this funny color here. Why is it changing to this funny color? Well, it turns out that that funny color is this surface down here, surface general. So even though it's not active, if you are not using the attributes of the cut body to generate the cut edges and polygons, it will inherit this surface, but only when you're using that fifth parameter. If you're not activating that fifth parameter, which is the status parameter, if you're not activating that, then it doesn't show. But we are, in this case, even though they could all be zero, we're still activating that parameter, so it's using that surface to generate in here. And that's also available on your info bar. So if I was to change that, you can see there that it's changed. So that's where it's getting that value from. I'm not entirely sure why that's why they've chosen to do that, why Archicad have chosen to do that, but that's where it comes from. And so we'll turn on attributes, generating attributes and it's cleaning up the edges. So one more thing we'll add. So I'll just create a parameter in here called side, and we'll use that to flip our cut plane. So instead of this parameter here, so one, two, three, it's the fourth parameter. Fourth parameter is our side. 
we'll exchange that out with our Boolean parameter here, which is again, either a zero or a one. And our side is looking for a zero or a one. Save that again. Have a look in our 3D. This is in the Archicad environment, not in the GDL scripting environment. We'll change that to that. There we go. So that's a way that you can utilize Booleans, your on off parameters combined with your status codes to avoid having to use if statements. So I could go if this, if that, get all complicated with my script, but you just throw them in where they're required. It works pretty well. So the last one we haven't really talked about is cut plane two here. And you can see that cut plane two has got an angle parameter, which is required, and an optional status parameter. Now, you remember that when we only used one parameter on the cut plane or the cut plane three, it was an angle. So the reason that cut plane two is here is if you want to combine an angle with a status. So one of these down here. If you do that with just a cut plane, it will start to treat that next parameter as the Y. So that's why you have your cut plane too, if you just want to use an angle cut plane with a status. Another thing to talk about here is where to declare your cut planes. You declare your cut plane before all the geometry you want to have cut, and then you declare your cut end to exclude other geometry that you don't want cut. What does that mean? So if I have my cut end here and I move it up to here, these will be excluded from my cut because these blue ones happen after the cut end. So let's click in my 3D view. Right, they're excluded. Same as if I bring this cut end down to the bottom here, but also bring my cut plane down between the two loops. So that means that these white ones, these gray ones will be excluded, but the blue ones will be cut. You'll also see that the cut plane looks like it's cutting slightly differently. And that's because we've got these transformations happening. I'm adding and I'm rotating. So that's also impacting where that cut plane gets declared, which is why it looks like it's in a slightly different location, because it is. Shift this back up to the top. And it's cutting all my blocks again. The other thing is if I have multiple cut planes declared throughout my script, you need to have a separate cut end for each of your cut planes or cut forms or whatever you've used. So unlike the transformation stack where I can delete multiple things, I can have one delete command and tell it how many to delete. I can't do that with a cut end. I have to have a separate cut end statement for each of my cut planes. Now I can contain those within a loop. So if, for example, I had five cut planes, I could have a loop doing five times and have that cut end declared within that loop. And you can see that in one of their examples here for K equals one to 15, cut end next K. So there you have it. I hope that made sense. Cut planes can be a bit of fun. So have a bit of a play around, figure out for yourself how it works, how it all hangs together. But this is an essential tool. Go and script something. I'll see you next time.